How do you feel about pretty privilege? Oh boy. You, you, you know how I am. I have a lot of feelings about it. <laughs> um, the one that, that, um, really struck me the most was the, 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 the young, well, the, the woman, the black woman at the end, her name is, um, it's okay if I say her name on here. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, she's a okay. public figure. Yeah, she's, yeah, she, her, her name she put herself out. Yeah. Her name was O. Steph, Steph Co. And I ran across her, um, video that somewhat went viral, almost 500,000 views. And I heard her talking about this concept called pretty privilege. And, you know, it's, it sparked my interest and I began to listen to her. And what really kind of threw me off is that this, this woman is 37 years old. Uh, the things that she was talking about, pretty privilege, these were concepts and things that I dealt with in middle school and high school. So when I hear a woman that's 37 years old, you know, talking about how she, you know, doesn't get drinks paid for her. I think uh, she said people weren't doing stuff for her at the job. She couldn't get into the VIP. Like these little trivial things like that. What really struck me was not the concept of pretty privilege. That wasn't it. It was the fact that a woman at 37 years old has nothing else to offer the younger generation but this entitlement right. attitude. She has no, in, in her 37 years, she has no wisdom, no guidance. She has nothing to offer the younger people. That is kind of more what struck me than just this concept. We kind of figure out where we belong. Like I said, like, junior high, high school, you know, a little bit into college. By the time I was 20, I was kind of over that whole thing. You know what I mean? Uh, just, uh, just a quick thing. I remember when I, when I was in high school, you had the, 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 the captain of the drill squad for us. And, and she was with the, the, the football team, the quarterback, you know what I mean? And you kind of understood where your place kind of was in society. Mm-hmm you get it and you said okay well i'm not the captain of the cheerleader however you know what i'm saying i can do this that or the other thing to overcompensate for that but how does a young a young girl learn this when you have 37 year old women filling their heads with this garbage i know yeah uh, that's it was very that's bad. and and i i wonder what is it about what is it about women in particular that 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 makes them want to reject what they already know as hierarchies in our in our dating realm you know what i mean i feel like so many women know that they may be at the bottom or in the middle or at the top but they try to neglect it to make people feel better why is, is that what it is is it just to make women feel better other women next to them feel better you know what i think it is i think we've dealt with hierarchies in society for for thousands of years right and we've just been fine with the way things have been. People understand people, you know, men are going to want to look at something beautiful. We all know this. And, and for centuries, it's been fine. I think our issue today is social media, uh, mm. not just the social media that we have like today, but even the media that we've had since we first had television and movies. You know, and it right. puts these ideas into people's heads that are unrealistic and they start to think something that is fantasy is a reality women knew for, for thousands of years that if you were the beautiful woman the damsel whatever then you get the king or you get the prince and that's how it goes but someone and some woman is going to be the peasant's wife and she was happy with that because she had a man over her to protect her in a very harsh world right and so forever that was fine now all of a sudden since the world is a little, well, a lot a bit easier for women, then they're not content with being chosen to be the wife of whoever that they fit for. They're not happy with that anymore. So uh, you have this 37-year-old woman who didn't learn the knowledge and the wisdom that I'm speaking now. She didn't learn it. So she ended up 37 years old, no husband, no children 
and she's online complaining about the fact that she can't get drinks and she can't she oh, oh her other thing was she, she doesn't turn heads when she comes into the room how silly is this right i mean um, you, you're talking so, about that's 90 percent of the human 95 percent of the human beings on the planet um what what happens is people idolize these people that are out of reach in terms of who they are um and, and one thing in particular that she said that that kind of led me it, it made me I felt a little different about what she was saying after she said it. And I think we spoke about this before. Uh, it was the fact that she said she's only been paired with pizza delivery guys, oh, right? Yeah. It, it, as oh, yeah. in like mm -hmm. the guys that she's been paired with are not up to par with what she wants. And that's the re I think that's ultimately the reason why she's alone is because you're trying to date guys that are out of your reach. You, you hey. want the, and not only that, but she's in LA. The most oh, competitive boy. market, California, and we spoke about this. California is the most competitive state in America, maybe next to Florida, in terms of good-looking women. So exactly. you take those same looks down to Tennessee or Arkansas, and you in a whole different ball game. But you want to stay in LA and compete against all them women, and it's just going to be a t it's going to be tough for competition there. Well, yeah. When I think you know, that's where I'm from. You know, I was raised in California. That's where I did my late, my uh, dating. I've only been in the South for the last four years, so I absolutely understand the LA market is, who is impossible almost. However, I looked at some of these this woman's other videos, and she said that she's lived in different parts of the country and she's dated many different men from different races. I don't know if she was being honest or not. Right. But at the end of the day, what you're saying is correct. She was not happy with what she was able to get. But here's the hypocrisy. She's not happy with, with what she can get. But do you think the man that gets her is necessarily happy with what he gets? He understands that that's what he gets. And for, exactly. for thousands of years, we've understood this. And she could have been with her man, serving her man. I think I said this in my video. He brings his pizza delivery money in. She brings her money in. They bring it together. They, you know, they invest, they buy property and you build. And that's how it's always been done. But all of a sudden, it's not good enough anymore. Right. No, yeah, I completely, I, I think, and, I, and that's exactly, it, it has to be the fact that average men don't have opportunities anymore and i think that if there's one thing that kevin samuels has done a really good job of it's showing how six and sevens expect nine and ten treatment in in 2021 it's <laughs> insane to me and I, I think a little bit what has to do with the two is the sexual liberation movement um mm -hmm. and and i have this a chart that i put up on a couple other videos where it talks about just the chances of dating a woman and 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 how many bodies how many partners a woman had before marriage, historically speaking, versus now. And when I tell you that the, percentage, the percentages are astronomically different, you really see the deterioration of marriage right before your eyes when you're looking at these charts. Uh, we know for a fact that women who are, the, the more partners you have as a woman equals the, the, the lower your happiness and the length of your marriage will be. All right. The more partners you have, the the shorter your marriage and the less happy your marriage will be. All right. So that's already a fact. OK. And, and we have more and more women feeling like they can just go out and do whatever they want without consequence. And what it comes down to is indulgence. Anything you do where you overindulge, there's consequences for it. And, and that comes from, I mean, you do alcohol. Yeah, alcohol feels good, but you can't go out and do it every night or you're going to become alcoholic. There's consequences. If you eat pizza every night. I love pizza. I love steak. I love... But if I eat too much of it every night, I'm going to be 400 pounds. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, who doesn't like sex? Everybody likes sex, but you can't go out and have sex with everybody in the world because you run the risk of STDs. You run the risk of getting pregnant. There's always consequences to overindulgence. You get what I'm saying? And I feel like a lot of those consequences have been nullified by this, this sexual liberation movement. So... But I think that kind of spans, you know, several different areas. The thing you're talking about, the overindulgence. I mean, you have shows now called 600 Pound Life. You know what I mean? There's really people out here, you know what I mean? Six and 700 pounds is overindulgence. And, you know, and it, as far as uh, this woman speaking about her dating life, 
what women are wanting, they're wanting the attention of all the men. But you really only need to get one. All right. she needed to do was focus on getting one man, but that is not going to make her happy. She wants to be the quote unquote standard. And I did want to touch on this. And you mentioned the big C word in your, in your, when you were speaking in the, in the beginning there. And it's so funny. We are so on the same page because yeah. if you really want to dig deep into this, this reeks of Marxism all over it.